Wilson Morales from Black Women TV talking with Juvie C. Leslie regarding your film, Double Life. How's it going? Great. Hi, Wilson. Good. Obviously, it's not that often we see you on film, you know, in such a big role. So what led to taking on this character? Um, I love thrillers. I grew up watching thrillers. I grew up watching action thrillers. I specifically loved a female-led action thriller to the point that when I get on Netflix, and you know how you have genres, I go into genres, I pick thrillers, and I wait until I find a female's face that is like the lead of it, and then I'll watch it. <laughs> yeah, but this ain't that. It's a thriller. It's not really so much of an action thriller, even though you do your share of things in here without giving any spoilers. So talking about this character, <laughs> about this character Jody you're playing, because I, I have questions. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So um, in my Joe world, I am dating this guy and in love and um he gets killed and in the midst of him of it being announced that he was killed I find out that he's also married and so there's like this life that he was living that I didn't even know about and um I end up meeting his wife <laughs> and we go on this journey of finding out who his killer or killers are and um, <laughs> it's just like this unlikely friendship that kind of starts to develop and kind of doesn't and then kind of does and then kind of doesn't. So it's really a journey. So my thing is, you know, in this today's world, how is it that Joe, your character, Joe, doesn't know he's married? I would think these days everybody Googles somebody, you know, looks through their social apps to see who's he I, been with, you know, or any of that stuff. I don't Google anyone. I think like. In the last two or three dates I've gone out on, I've never Googled them. And I don't even know if I've asked for their social media. Look, it's just a date, right? But then it's different because they're dating, but maybe he doesn't have IG. And nowadays, that's a good way to keep secrets. Just say you don't have Instagram. <laughs> but the guy is a DA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that you know, so bad. that's that's a little bit more different than obviously some regular Joe. If it's a regular Joe, you don't need to know. But you would like to think that if it's a DA, you know, anybody a public figure is well known to know. You know, it's it, a public figure. You would know what their background is all about. You know what's interesting, Wilson? I don't Google people. I don't know if it's because of what I do, and I, you know what I mean. Like I don't think to Google people. I think I've never. I don't know that I've ever really actually Googled any guy. So it doesn't surprise me that in my Joe life, I didn't Google him to see that he was or wasn't married. You know what I mean? And then usually when you are a public figure and you're Googling the person, the first set of links are going to be the work that he does. So even if I did Google him, I'm sure it will be cases that I see. They're not going to be, this is his life. They're going to be, these are the cases that he's fought, that he's won, that he's lost. Okay. There and there is, okay, what makes Joe want to go investigate she's a bartender you know and obviously we throughout the film we get to know a little bit of her life but what makes her want to get in the thrust of not only investigating his death but having a somewhat friendship with his wife i think that the moment that she realizes the moment that i realized that this isn't an accident i want to know what happened and i've always been a badass like that like those are usually the guys that i date the guys that handle things on their own and that's how I was raised and then you know when I meet Sharon and she has that same energy really it's just like one person eggs the other person on and we just kind of get it rolling we get it we get it moving and I think that's all it takes sometimes it takes one other person that has the same mindset of you as you which is like hey I kind of want to know what happened hey I kind of want to I, I kind of want to know what happened I have this information. I have this information. If the two of us have this much information without the police's help, how much more do you think we can find out without their help? Like we both have access to everything we need to know. We have access to his office. We have access to his boss. We have access to everybody we need to know to find out what's going on. Uh -huh. Are we ready? There's a scene in the movie where you're shooting a gun and obviously you have good range, you know, was that something you've done before in terms of shooting a weapon or did you have to work on that? Yeah, I love shooting guns. I have guns. I take them to the gun range and I shoot them. <laughs> okay. Now, <laughs> you know, and then, you know, obviously you're no stranger to having a big role, you know, we've seen you do it on TV, you know, but when you're doing on film, uh, how much of a difference is it knowing you have to do more on the page 
that you have that you've done before on TV? Um, I mean, in, in any films that I do, I think the, the great part about film is that there's a beginning, middle and end. I know the whole story. And so there's no surprises, you know, there's no, oh, now you're throwing in the fact that I got a daddy, but we ain't talked about my daddy the whole time. Or, oh, now you're throwing the fact that I got a brother and we ain't talked about my brother the whole time, you know? So you, when I do television, I'm constantly having to be open and accepting different stories, no matter what. But in film, there's a beginning, middle and end. So I have all of the ingredients that I need to accept. And it gives me a little bit more flexibility and, and uh, confidence in confirming my, 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 like what I, what I'm, what I'm believing in, you know, I have everything that I need in film and TV mm -hmm. that can change. That's You've worked with Go ahead. I was just going to say, especially in worlds like superhero worlds, because then you also deal with multiple realities, you know, like, oh, okay. So in this life, I play Ryan and my mother was killed by the Wonderland gang and da, da, da. but in this world I'm a villain and I'm playing Red Death and like that wasn't my story you know and so it's like you really have to be always like accepting new storylines with the same beginning circumstances. What did playing Ryan do for your career? I think that I mean every opportunity I've had has really opened up new doors for me. Um, I, obviously with Ryan Batwoman as a whole opened up a world for me. It first of all, I've led projects, I've led several projects, I've led several films, but it was my first time leading a television show. And so it showed me my ability. I am so proud of the work that we did on that show. And I'm especially proud of myself for being able to come in under those circumstances and carry it and have such um just to me like do do such major like life-changing things you know we we broke boundaries and that was like that's an honor to be able to do that um and then it allowed me to know that I can lead a show and I can't wait to lead another one <laughs> real talk you you've done tv shows you've done films actors can never stop learning so when you do a movie like this the life what did you pick up from your director that may be a little bit different from what you've done before that maybe can possibly take on to your next projects, whatever it may be. What's interesting is that Martin Wood is our director and I was really intrigued with him because he did Virgin Rivers and I really love how that show was shot. And so I asked him, could I shadow him? And so he said, yes. And we prepped um, about a week or two before we even, before I even got to Vancouver, we prepped virtually. And then I got to Vancouver two weeks early before we started filming to prep with them like on the ground. And so that's a huge part of what I took from that was the prep was, you know, I, I've shadowed several directors when I was on Batwoman, but I don't, I didn't get to prep. I was the leader of the show. So I was constantly working, but to be able to see how things start, to be able to see how you get a script as a director, the first time you, the, the, it, the first time you digest the script, these pictures and visions and visuals come to you, you hold on to that. So that way, when it's time to go into, okay, this is how I see this and this is how I see that, you already have this vision board. You have it in your head, but you also should draw it out. But you already have this vision board of how you see your film going from beginning, middle, and end. That way, when you start to bring in your 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 um, your DP and you bring in props and you bring in, bring in HMU, you know your basis. And so everyone else is just going to heighten the story. You know what I mean? So always hold on to that original digestion, but then allow people to bring in elements that help to heighten the story. And that's what I learned from Martin that I definitely would bring, not just as an actor, but as a director as well. So when are we going to see your directorial piece? Uh, so I did. I've already directed. I directed a short called Black Excellence. I went to the film festivals, which was really great. Um, I directed a short called Wolf, which just won another award as well. Um, and we'll see what's next after that. Anything longer? You know, you've been shadowing these people. So obviously you know how to direct, but now is it a, it's a whole different thing where you have to do a whole feature list. Definitely. I didn't have the time. <laughs> that was the hugest thing. Because you got to understand, like, I mean, you know this. When you're directing, you're shooting the film. Yeah, that's one part of it. But you have to prep <laughs> and you have to do post. That's a lot of time. And I've been working. So I haven't really had the opportunity just to be able to direct anything longer just yet. So when I do have the availability, I definitely will. What goes into saying yes to any of the projects you take? Is it the role, the story, 
the time frame, as you just mentioned, of when you can do it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of elements. I think like, okay, well, when am I available? So I know that I don't start shooting this project until then. I have three months. This could work. This works in my time frame. Uh, where is this filming? <laughs> I don't know how many times I'm going to say yes to Vancouver anymore. <laughs> I'm ready to see other parts of the world. Um, and then um, what is the story? I think that what's important to me is what am I fighting for in this story? If, 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 if I feel like there's something to fight for, I'm usually, and I, and I love the writing and I love the concept and I love, I don't have to love my character because I think that that's what makes it even more fun when there's a conflict of how I feel about the character. Cause now I can truly lose myself and fall in love with the light that I'm taking on. But usually those are my elements. What am I fighting for? Does it work with my schedule? And how do I feel about like the entire story from beginning middle to end? I love romantic comedies, which I've done one but I would love to do more of those. Mm -hmm. With Stubble Life, you know, there's right now, there's a glut of programs out there. Mm -hmm. Streaming, network, cable, if you choose to go to the theaters, you know, stage or film, you know, um, what's going to get an audience to watch it? Because it's not a question of whether or not you did a film, who's in it, if it's good or not. It's got, you got to get people to know about it, you know? It's like, you know, what's going to get an audience to go see Double Life besides the fact that I can say, oh, she's in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? It's, I think everything is about what your taste is. And so, like, for me, I love thrillers. I love female-led action thrillers. And if that's something that you love, this is that movie. If you love whodunits, this is that movie. If you love twists in your movies, this is that movie. If you love to see a Black woman lead your movie, this is that movie. So those are some of the elements I think uh, attract moviegoers to this film. It's good talking to you. Obviously, you know, you, as they say, she knows how to keep a job, how to get a job, how to stay at a job. <laughs> That's you. Whether you're on the big screen or small screen, you know, they were like, oh, you, your name has been out there for some time. And it's good. That means you have a good team. You're getting work out there. Thank so you. I'm sure we'll talk down the road. Yes, for sure. Yeah. It's an honor. Thank you. And you're good. And I want to say off the record, there's a series on ABC. I don't know. If we remember, um, I can't think of the name where it's uh, it's two ladies and they they got together because one was having the affair with the husband and then he got killed. Is the one with Ryan Felipe? Big is it big country, I think it is. Oh, um Big Sky. Big yeah, Sky. Big Sky. Uh -huh. big Sky. You know, you remember the premise of it, you know, yeah, the black woman on it. The black woman was having an affair with Ryan Felipe. Yeah. And then he gets killed. So she teams up with his wife. Yeah. Try to investigate what was going on. Yes, yes. I I watched the pilot episode of that. Such a good show. Yeah. Yes. So there's always similar stories, you know? There's all it's, the, it's the empathetic campfire. We've all had some type of shared experience in all these stories. And yeah, so it's a matter of how how well is the execution. That's what it yeah, boils down to. Definitely. So that being said, have I know you have to talk to more people. Have yourself a good day. We'll talk down the road. Thank you, Wilson. Have a good one. Bye.